If you were to be hiking in the Assam region of India, you would come across this orchid. But not only there, if you were hiking in Bhutan or the Eastern Himalayas, depending on how adventurous you are, you would also find this orchid. This orchid is called Papiopedalum spicerianum, but on my patio here in southern Spain, I introduce to you Stan and Ollie or Laurel and Hardy, depending which country you come from. <laughs> Yes, in case you didn't hear it the first time, I am in southern Spain and I have the absolute honor and pleasure to have a Papiopedalum spicerianum thriving on my humble little patio, coming from a very regal region of the world. One of the very old findings from back in 1888. Well, here she is, and I have to tell you, thriving is the right word, even though she looks a little bit lanky-dory, but that's why it's Laurel and Hardy and Stan and Ollie here on the patio. But she is thriving because this is the first time I have this orchid blooming with two blooms since she arrived in my collection in January of 2020. For that reason, she gets a dedicated little video. Why do I keep saying she? I have to refrain from saying she because I just dubbed him, them, <laughs> Stan and Ollie or Laurel and Hardy. The reason I use these two characters is because, well, they are hilarious, I would say. When it comes to the early days of slapstick comedy, those two are by far the pioneers of slapstick comedy. And look at these blooms. Now, I have to ask your forgiveness whether you choose this one to be Stan and this one to be Ollie. Either way, this one is already quite old in comparison to this one which just opened. I've been hoping to get them both to be in bloom before the first bloom fades and something took a bite out of it and left the lip a little wonky. But you will see the resemblance when it comes to slapstick comedy in the blooms here. You got the googly eyes and you've got that funny little grin that goes all cheeky. <laughs> I just love this bloom. Also, it doesn't really matter how you look at it. Even if you look at this bloom upside down, it's as if the petals have their hands up going yay. It's amazing. Either way you look at these blooms, they also have a top hat. Stan and Ollie also had a top hat. Now, I say Stan and Ollie a lot because in Germany that that's what they were called. That's why I said, depending on where you come from, it could be Laurel and Hardy. So these are quite comical blooms and I think the pair of them just match beautifully. And being the first time that she's blooming with two blooms, I have to say I'm absolutely, utterly pleased. In the early years, I always brought this orchid inside to protect it from the cold temperatures that my Spanish winters have. The lows can be five degrees Celsius, but now she has been outside two winters in a row until the temperatures drop below 10 degrees Celsius, which makes my orchid shuffle a little bit easier because that is her tolerance level. She can go all the way down to 10 degrees Celsius and be quite happy. Change the pronoun, Nina. Change the pronoun. He can be outside until the temperatures drop below 10 degrees Celsius. That's how temperature tolerant he is. And then, of course, the summers, it's no biggie. I get quite warm here and that can reach up to 40 degrees Celsius. But then he lives nicely shaded, nicely tucked away where there's always some form of coolness, if that's even possible. And it is so rare that I get to 40 degrees Celsius. Normally, I hover just below 30 degrees Celsius and he can tolerate up to 32 degrees Celsius. So you can see the margin that you are able to play with if you were to want this orchid or if you're not sure as you are cultivating your spicerianum. There's quite a broad spectrum within the temperature range that makes this orchid not that difficult to grow. And boy oh boy does this orchid love producing roots. It is so so generous. It goes against anything about slipper orchids being stingy on the root front, needing a lot of time to be able to grow roots, establish itself. Not with this one. It is very quickly pot bound. Even if you've only got one fan growing and only a second fan on the go, it very quickly becomes pot bound, which is another lovely attribute that Stan and Ollie have. They're not stingy on the roots, making it, again, a very easy orchid to grow. 
I'm hoping to have Stan and Ollie as a pair for maybe another week, 10 days. The first bloom has already been open for five weeks, so you can see that the bloom duration is quite extensive. If I wanted to, I could already cut the first bloom off, but I'm going to leave it because I just love this visual. It makes me chuckle every time I walk past. <laughs> so when you get your Spicerianum to grow multiple blooms, you can have it in bloom easily three months. Considering that slipper orchids are also very notorious for being such slow growers, that makes it nine months out of the year that you are without blooms. Then for three months you can enjoy something really cute <laughs> and cheeky looking. <laughs> I haven't fertilized this orchid much. I prefer to just use RO water with some tannins in it because my setup is LECA and self-watering. So I don't go heavy on fertilizer at all. If anything, in the last two years, I've only addressed this orchid once with a teeny tiny bit of calcium and magnesium, maybe 50 parts per million. You see, I'm not even giving you specifics because I hardly do it. And I can't recall when I did it the last time. Now though, that she is growing a little bit more vigorously and I've got more fans on the go, I do believe it's time for me to dial in a little tiny amount of fertilizer. So I'm going to start very, very low, 50 parts per million every six months, and we'll see how that goes. Being the fact that she is also on the cooler growing front, she is happiest when it's a little bit cooler and not so hot. That means that right now I am starting with 50 parts per million of fertilizer, and then in spring we'll give her another 50 parts per million. My fertilizer has calcium and magnesium in it, so I'm not going to be supplementing with that. But I do have to provide something for this orchid and that is why my water now always has a very low parts per million of tannin in it. And I do that by adding a tea bag, black tea, into a bucket of plain RO water and let that steep overnight. And I get such a diluted concentration of RO water with tannins, which Paphiopedilums, well any slipper orchids, absolutely adore because they are terrestrial, semi-terrestrial. They're used to having debris around the roots that leach out tannins. Now this one could also be a lithophyte, but still when it rains and it pours, there's a lot of tannins pouring over the roots, which these slipper orchids do absorb and enjoy. Seeing as I am in LECA and self-watering, my orchids depend entirely on what I give them. So if I make a mistake, for example, in over fertilizing this orchid and giving it too much with 50 parts per million every six months, we will soon be able to tell because the leaf tips will go brown. That would be fertilizer burn then for a slipper orchid. That is the indicator. That's when you know, whoa, that's a bit much. The damage won't be reversed, but it is a visual indicator. That would be too much. So stick around. I am excited moving forward to be able to give Stan and Ollie some fertilizer because it just seems so weird to me not to be fertilizing my orchids, but slipper orchids have taught me over the years that too much TLC is exactly what they don't want. I have a much more comprehensive and detailed care video on my Spicerianum. I will link that in the description. I just needed a reason to show you double blooms. <laughs> Even though I came a little bit late and one was damaged, but yeah, look at that. Googly eyes, cheeky grin, Stan and Ollie, or should I say greetings from Laurel and Hardy. Thank you so much for watching, but before you leave the video, would you please give this a like? And if you have not subscribed to the channel, your support would be greatly appreciated. If you've watched to the end, thank you so, so much. That support goes a long way as well. And I get to wish you a beautiful day. However, I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.